We'll now look at different types of sampling. So there are several different ways to take a sample. The first is gonna be random. And this is the one we strive for. This is where everyone has an equal chance of being selected. We tend to do these with random number tables or computer generated things, but it's basically everyone in your population has an equal chance of being selected. A stratified sample. Here we divide something and we divide the population into groups. And then we select from each group. So we are, we select from each group. We may see these where we want a certain number of men and a certain number of women to participate. So we'll separate based on gender and then pick some women and some men. We may also see this as political party or lots of other different things. So the idea is in my example here, we have two different groups. And so we're gonna pick a few on the left and then some on the right. They don't have to be an equal number on each side. The main thing is we do make sure we have some from each side. Systematic sampling, we are going to select the kth mem every kth member. of the population. So the value of K can change depending on what you're doing. Maybe you're doing a survey where you're standing at a particular place and say that you're gonna talk to every 10th person. That would be systematic. This is often seen whenever we check for defects on an assembly line, we pull off every thousandth or, or every 10,000th. That would be a systematic sample. The next is cluster. So here we divide the population into clusters. And then once we've done that, we select some clusters. So one or more clusters are selected. So this is often confused with stratified. So stratified breaks the population into groups as well, and then chooses some people from every group. Cluster divides them into groups and then picks certain clusters. So here we'll pick the first and we'll talk to everyone there. And we'll pick the last and we'll talk to everyone there. So this is the main difference. Stratified breaks, it into pop, uh, breaks the population into groups and then talks to some people in every group. Clusters breaks it into groups and talks to everyone in some groups. Convenience. This is where you use something that's easy. Maybe you talk to your friends or your family or something like that. You use what's easily available to you. Self-selected samples. These are where the respondents decide if they want to be included. These tend to be unreliable. Um, usually in self-selected studies, there's only two types of people who self-select, and these are people who are passionate one way or the other, either people who are very passionately for or very passionately against. We also have multi-sage sampling. This is where we use several different methods and which methods we use can vary, but it's basically any time we use many methods, really just more than one. We do have error, so we have a sampling error. This is the difference between the sample in the population. Basically, no matter how much we try, 
or how great of a sample we get, no sample is perfect. So this is the actual difference that we have between what happened with our sample and what happens with the actual population. We also have non-sampling error. This is anything else. It could be data that's obtained erroneously. It could be human error. Maybe we're typing in a lot of numbers into a database and we mess one up. Anything like that. Anything that's not a direct result of just the sample being not the population.